First question is from Milena A. Race. Uh, what is better, HIT versus traditional cardio, and why? Yeah, uh, this is one of those uh, annoying questions where I'm going to have to say it depends, right? So let's <laughs> yeah. let's talk about the pros and cons of each, right? The pro of HIT, you burn more calories in a shorter period of time. It is more muscle preserving than traditional forms of cardio. No, go back to that for a second, though. It's more calories uh, per the minute within it. Correct. But you could technically do steady state where for an hour compared to the 12 minutes, right. and you'll technically burn more yeah, calories. So, so, if, so it's make all, sure if they all do 15 minutes, right, yes. then you're going to burn more with HIT than you will with traditional. I, I think it's important to know that because I know that it gets marketed like that a lot of times, yeah. and so people are like, wow, I can do 15 minutes, and it burns more calories than an hour of cardio. It's no. like, oh, no, that's not what it is. It's no, it's more per time spent. It's It does preserve muscle better. Um, it is better for, uh, if you want, the kind of explosive performance that a lot of sports – are looking for. Um, here's the cons. Requires a lot higher skill. The, in, the risk of injury is much higher. If you're a high-stress individual, probably not appropriate. So it's less appropriate for far more people than traditional cardio. Now we go to traditional cardio. It does burn less calories, but it also tends to be more recuperative. Right. It doesn't preserve muscle as well, but if you're doing traditional resistance training and your diet's okay, then you're you're probably okay. Traditional cardio is not going to give you the kind of athletic performance that most sports look for unless your sport is like long distance, you know, type endurance, like running or whatever. Um, and it's just more appropriate for more people. So essentially what we're, what we're asking is what's better, a hammer or a screwdriver? Yeah. And it depends on the job and the tool that we need for the job. Well, I think too, like risk factors. So if you go in the high intensity route, yes, it is more muscle preserving, but also you have to be a little bit more advanced um, in terms of having the prerequisites and having yes. experience uh, exercising at that pace uh, where cardio, you can kind of string it out a bit longer, might not be quite as impactful in the joints. Like you can kind of structure it that way. So, you know, you, you have to kind of decide what makes sense in terms of your goals and like are you really at that level or you know should you just kind of construct more of a, a cardiovascular or like longer version of that you know every time we talk about cardio i feel like we upset the cardio bunnies hmm. uh, or the people that just absolutely love to do cardio um but I really wish that the, the general population or a majority of people that are listening to this that are trying to pursue fat loss, which is why most people get on cardio. Very few people are just doing it for overall health, which if that's the case, I think that's fantastic. Most people think it's one of the best modes for you to get in shape and to lose body fat. And I just wish if, if I could convey one thing to those people, I wish that you would you would figure it out without that first and then learn to add that in later and then have fun. Add hit. Try that out for a while. See how it makes you feel. Add a little bit of cardio. Maybe do some walking. Maybe do some hiking. Mm -hmm. Maybe do some stair mass. Maybe play with all these. But first, figure out your your caloric maintenance. Okay, what 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 amount of calories do you need to eat to maintain your body weight with no cardio and just your normal daily activities? And then learn how to program training in there, weight lifting, to see how the body changes from that. And or if you reduce a couple hundred calories from your maintenance, how your body responds as far as losing body fat, learn all that first and then bring and introduce cardio in and, and, and bring it in intermittently and or put it in places that you go like, oh, I could see myself doing this for the rest of my life. I could definitely do a one hour hike every weekend or, you know, 20 or 30 minutes, you know, two to three times a week. But first, figure out figure out all those other things of how your body responds without it in there and then introduce it in there, I think it would just, it would benefit everybody so much. Yeah, as a primary mode of uh, exercise for fat loss, it's not very effective. It leads to plateaus, leads to metabolic adaptation. Um, it just, it's just not a super effective sole way of, of weight loss, at least not on a long-term basis. But, you know, back to the, the question of HIIT versus traditional, which is, you know, more your steady state cardio. What percentage of your guys' clients – do you did you put on hit and what percentage did you have do something similar to steady state? Um, I tended to use steady state more. So uh, did I. Yeah, like far more. It was a very small percentage. I, yeah. you know, apply hit to. Just yeah, because same, of where they were coming from. Same here because if if I if you have movement pattern issues and a high stress life and I'm not there to monitor and watch you and I'm asking hit training requires. All out intensity or effort. It's very high intense. I mean, it's part of the name, right? High intensity interval training. Whatever 
dysfunction you have or movement pattern issue you have is going to be amplified tremendously. And it's not a recuperative form of cardio. It's a more of a workout. And there's nothing wrong with that. But I like to have cardio. When I'm talking about the average person, if I'm talking to an athlete, that's totally different. But yeah, I'm talking to the average person. Used to hit quite a bit. Yes. Yeah, but we didn't train very many athletes. No, right? I'm no. not talking to the average yeah, person. I wanted cardio to be recuperative. So I would do lots of things like walking and hiking and cycling to where that's going to facilitate recovery rather than take away from <laughs> the recovery that I need when I'm applying resistance training with them. So that's what I didn't want to do. I don't want your workout, your cardio workout, unless, again, you're an athlete and there's a specific performance goal. But I didn't want your cardio workout to be so intense that it competed with what I was trying to do with resistance training in the sense that I had to modify my volume and intensity to make room for your cardio. I don't want to do that. Again, unless you're an athlete and you have specific performance stamina goals, but if your goal is fat loss and health, then I'm, I'm going to pick the form of cardio that's appropriate for all of that in the context of what I'm doing with you. And it was probably 90% of my clients, I would have them do traditional cardio, you're also maybe gonna, 10% did hit. You're also going to pick the form of cardio that's more likely for them to sustain long-term. Yes. And getting a client, that's why we, we talk about the steps and the walks and the hikes and strolls with your spouse. Like <clears throat> It's so much easier to convince a client to do that. You said something the other day on the podcast too. It's so true. It's like, if I if I give my client like step goals or hey I want you to walk for an hour every day and you could break it you could break the hour up in 10 minute increments you could do it all in one you could do it in two half hours I don't care just get an hour of walking purely walking for a day then that means a client can do this oh wow I have a 15 minute break right now mm -hmm. I'm going to go for a little bit of a walk or oh I'm on lunch now you know instead of driving to get food I'm going to walk to get food like they can do things that like you're not going to go like I'm it's my lunch break and I'm going to go do sprints on the hill no like right. nobody yeah. is doing that okay, unless you have a job yeah, where change your clothes and your yeah, sweat and the it's thing. just the, the, it's just not likely to happen for most people so for mm. the general pop i would say mine was more like a 70 25 split i would say 75 percent of my clients i did steady state traditional uh, cardio or walking 25 percent. and the reason why I'm, maybe i'm saying a little bit higher is because uh i I don't think I trained more athletes. It was I had the very small percentage was maybe one to five percent was athletes that I utilized hit, and then my advanced clients. So my clients that have been training for a long period of time, and we've mm -hmm. done steady state cardio forever. We've done I've, I've strengthened them there, and we've done explosive stuff, yeah. and so they're ready for that. But I don't. Did you guys see what just happened to Brendan Shaw? Oh, he, he hurt himself. He hurt his. He blew uh, hamstrings. both his hamstrings. Yeah. Thought he would go for a sprint real quick. Yeah, you know, that would decided that, to go 100. percent That having, wouldn't have happened if he went for a light jogger. That's walk. right. That's uh, right. He was yeah. racing a friend, and the, the reason why I bring him up, not to throw shade, we we got a lot of love for no, Brendan, no, we love is that Brendan. that that's an example of why, as a trainer, I wouldn't do that with a normal client because it, it's an all out. It's a, that you are asking somebody for all out for 20 seconds to get after it as hard as they possibly can, and then call down. If you get after it as hard as you can, and you haven't conditioned the body. To handle, that's exactly what happens. You blow yeah. a hamstring, you roll an ankle, you hurt your knee, yep. you do something like that, and the pursuit of you're going to get this this fraction more of fat loss or retaining muscle over it, it's just not worth it for a majority of the clientele. Hey, if you enjoyed that clip, you can find the full episode here, or you can find other clips over here. And be sure to subscribe.